Hello and welcome to the show. Today's challenge is an overheating home theatre cabinet. Whether it's a computer cabinet or a uh, audio cabinet, uh, they can get very hot depending on how many components you've got running in them. And if they get too hot, they'll fail. So what we want to do today is build a module that will run two temperature sensors, detect the internal temperature of the cabinet, and when things get too hot, activate a fan to cool things down. For today's project, we'll actually use an Arduino. This is an Arduino Uno R3, and this will be the basis for the day's project. So let me take you through the components, the parts that we'll use for this project, uh, and we'll start to assemble it. So these are the parts here, 12 volt fan, uh, just a normal everyday computer fan. Uh, it's a 200 milliamp uh, model, uh, 80 centimeter fan. Uh, the actual little wall ward or plug pack, wall ward for our American friends. So this particular uh, plug pack's 12 volts and um, 0.4 amps. So 400 milliamps out of that, it's just going to be enough. Probably should use a little bit more, but uh, I think we'll be okay. Uh, and the reason I say that is 200 milliamp draw out of the fan when the fan's actually running. Uh, an Arduino by itself. Um, so just one of these boards all by themselves really only draw, uh, they draw about 45 to 50 milliamps. So you need to take that into account. So 50 milliamps out of the board, 200 milliamps out of the fan. And uh, the MOSFET, so this is a MOSFET, talk about that in a second, um, plus the two LM31, uh, LM35s uh, will actually have you know, potentially another 50 milliamp draw going through there. So we're up around the 300 mark, maybe 350, and you never really get a full um, 400 out of something like that all the time, but uh, yeah, we should still be okay. So the idea is that the microcontroller, the Arduino, and I will be using the entire Arduino. I'm not going to uh, uh, take out the uh, microcontroller, the AT Mega 328, and put it on a breadboard or anything like that. Um, you can, and, but for my purpose here, I, I actually want the entire microcontroller and these aren't too expensive at the moment, so I'm going to use all of that rather than make my own circuit. So microcontroller will sense the temperature from the LM35s. Now this is uh, an LM35. Give me a close up on that one. So there we are, LM35. Uh, standard temperature sensor. Okay, so that is identical to this. Should still be able to see LM35 on there. Yep, there we go. Right, it's identical to this. It's just put onto a very convenient breakout board. Uh, so we can use a standard three pin cable here. Uh, and these, the reason this is actually more advantageous is that this is nice and easy to mount uh, via the extension cable, the breakout cable, inside the cabinet and have the other one outside the cabinet. So you can basically just install these almost anywhere uh, and still get the reading going through to the Arduino. So I'll be using two of those and the last component is this MOSFET. So field effects, a field effects a transistor and this particular one, upside down, Alright, there we go. So this is capable of 60 volts DC uh, at about 20 amps. Um, and you can buy these individually of course, but again this is already on a breakout module um, and the passives are already installed. It's just for convenience more than anything else. So if you're going to make it easy for yourself, why not? So that little MOSFET is the power supply that we'll actually be using to power the fan, right? And the reason that you can't just plug the fan directly into the Arduino is because it doesn't have enough power. So from the output pins on the Arduino, you can power certain devices, certain components, but the output pins on the Arduino are only good for about 20 to 30 milliamps. Um, just have a look at the Arduino website to get the actual um, accurate number, but it's around 20 to 30 milliamps. 200 milliamp fan. It's not enough power coming out of this. You'll just cook it. So what we need to do is we actually need to run power through the MOSFET, 
which will easily power that fan and use one of the pins as a trigger pin. And the trigger pin is what the, uh, what the signal will come from the Arduino to the trigger pin. So it will either be low or high, positive voltage or no voltage. So that will trigger the MOSFET and allow power to flow through right, and complete the circuit for the fan, activating the fan. And we'll cover that in more detail in a second. So that's basically the circuit that we'll be putting together. Uh, it won't be very elaborate, but it should do the job. I wanted to talk a little bit more about the portable power supply we made in the previous episode. Uh, one word of warning, uh, depending on what reference you find and you, you look at, the safe DC working limit is 42 volts. And obviously with the four 9 volt batteries that we used in this example, we're up around the 40 volt mark. So if you're just not ready for working with something like 40 volts, uh, or you're not confident about your own safety, just maybe hold off on this project, or alternatively drop the four volts, uh, sorry, the four nine volt batteries down to three. Uh, you'll still get uh, a 25 volt power supply, which is potentially more than enough. So yeah, just that word of warning, 40 volts is, um, is up toward that threshold of what they consider a safe DC working limit. Another thing about this, when I put this together, I knew what I was going to be using it for, uh, powering microcontrollers, some LEDs, little projects and things. So the heat that will be generated by this, so this has got 40 volts, basically 40 volts of DC power pack going into the 317. If you're asking, say, 5 volts out of this, which it will do, uh, that's a 35 volt difference at least 35 volts or yeah so if you're asking one amp and this will do one and a half amps out of a 317t so if you're asking say an amp you're driving something that draws an amp and there's a 30 volt difference between the batteries that you're putting into the 317 and the power that you want out then that difference is going to be generating heat and in that example 30 watts of heat the heat sink and the setup i've got in there is probably good for about five so if you're powering microcontrollers, small devices, and low current, and for a short time, this is fine. If you're gonna be asking the full range of what this is actually capable of doing, the heat sink that I used in this example is nowhere near enough. Uh, you need to, you know, something six times or 10 times the size of that, and or potentially run a fan. And I've actually got a fan I thought about putting into this one. Uh, the last point I wanted to talk about was the resistors themselves. I've used stock standard, again, because I knew what I'd be using it for, I've used stock standard um, 0.25 watt resistors. And if you're going to be asking much out of this, they're not enough. So if you wish to, uh, like I said, an amp, something like um, uh, you know, DC motors or something like, like that, you're going to need to increase the uh, resistor wattage because you'll burn the 0.25 watt resistors out. Uh, so what I'd like to do, I'll just wait for your feedback. If you want to just see this thing taken through to destruction, I'll put a, a decent load on there, put the thermo probe on it, uh, let it heat up and show you what it takes to actually cook an LN317T, all the resistors that are in this exact circuit, uh, let me know. Uh, if you'd rather that I revisit this with uh, maybe a switch mode uh, voltage regulator, uh, or just increase the heatsink, uh, put a fan in there and upgrade the, um, upgrade the resistors, I'll wait for your feedback. Okay, this is the uh, piece of board. I've made a cutout for the fan, so the fan will realistically go here. Uh, I'll probably mount the Arduino somewhere down there on the board. Arduinos do come with um, some screw holes already in them. Makes life easy. Uh, I'll run a terminal block up here. I've got this um, uh, nine volt battery holder with the barrel jack on it, which is already suited to the Arduino. So just cut the ends off here, and I'll take the power out of the terminal block and um, just uh, straight into the Arduino there. So it'll take 12 volts through that barrel jack. Uh, so the other components, I'll run one of the temperature sensors down the bottom, and that'll connect uh, via one of these types of leads. All right, straight into the Arduino. I'll just make up a connector. Uh, this one will be uh, 
uh, on the inside of the case itself so it'll be out of sight and this will just come up through this hole uh, in the board and connect again to the Arduino and the MOSFET I'll probably mount somewhere up here so I've got plenty of room on the board and I'll just mount the um, mount the parts where I feel you know, nice and spacey and not too much in the way. Uh, I'll affix a few of these components to the board now and start connecting some of the wiring but I uh, won't get into the details of how the MOSFETs connected up uh, or which um, how the uh, LM35s actually connect to the Arduino. Um, I'll get to that in a minute. So I've progressed a little further in putting this together on this uh, MDF board. Um, put a little terminal block in there uh, just to get the power from the plug pack to come into the, the overall um, circuit. This won't be permanent. Um, these are fine for getting your, uh, getting your prototype working, but in a more permanent fixture you probably don't want this. Um, even though, like I said, I'm going to use the entire Arduino here. So I've got this powered up at the moment, uh, coming through the barrel jack of the Arduino. This is about measured at about 13.2 volts coming in. This is still okay for the Arduino through the barrel jack because it's actually got a voltage regulator on the board. So I'll power that up quickly. Uh, and as you can see, I've got power coming through and I've got a faster version of the uh, blink sketch running on there. So I'll just continue on, uh, mount this to the board, mount the fan to the board, um, got the little cut out there, let the air flow through and uh, start looking at the LM35s and the MOSFET. Now we've got the power going to our, our module, our um, product uh, and we've got the Arduino sitting there and the fan for the most part is hooked up. We'll have a closer look at the MOSFET, this little sucker here, and the LM35 temperature sensors and how they actually work before we go any further. Let's have a look at those in more detail now. Okay, so what we've got here is actually the uh, Freetronics website and this is the actual um, MOSFET that we're using in our project. So as you can see here, the digital output pin uh, connects to the first pin as we look at the product. All right, so G, it's marked as G. Uh, so the output connects to G. Um, this is the fan circuit. So we have positive power coming into the fan and the negative of the fan circuit connects to the center pin of the MOSFET or the MOSFET uh, module, D. And the S on this MOSFET module connects to a common ground. Um, so ground on the Arduino, ground on the MOSFET, uh, positive, uh, negative power um, from the MOSFET center pin is the negative of this circuit over here and that will power the fan. Okay so this is the uh, DF Robot website and this is the exact uh, LM35 version 2 analog temperature sensor that we're using. So if we have a look at uh, don't really need the data sheet on this one, uh, although if you look at the website you can obviously get a lot of information about this particular module. Um, the important part to note on this one is that this is the new version, so the power in is the center pin and the ground is the uh, bottom pin. And if you actually have a look at the cable that the uh, actual sensors come with, uh, you can actually see that um, center pin is uh, power, uh, the red cable, and the black at the bottom is the ground, and the blue is what we want to go to our sense pin or our analog input pin on the Arduino. Okay, so this is the final uh, Arduino code. So uh, the constant integers declared up top, the analog pins for the LM35s, the digital pin which will simply be on or off which will activate the MOSFET and therefore be driving the fan. Um, sensor values and output values, I've talked about those already. Uh, all I've added here is digital right fan low. Um, so basically at the start of the uh, program it makes sure that the uh, trigger to the MOSFET is turned off so the fan's not running. So the void loop 
uh, and all I've really done here is added an if statement so if output value 2 which is really just the internal LM35 so if the internal LM35 is reading higher than the external LM35 plus 3 so in other words if the internal temperature is higher than the external temperature uh, plus 3 uh, digital right trigger fan high so turn on the fan uh, otherwise turn the fan off now this uh, this extra stuff at the bottom right, let's move it up a bit so I've got some serial write data down here uh, which is just again to put the things on the screen I don't need this in the final version so you just rem those out or just delete it completely and I'll upload this sketch to the Arduino hopefully there's no errors No, no errors. So if I look, turn on the serial monitor now. Okay, the external temperature, uh, temperature sensor. So the LM35 outside of the cabinet is reading 20. The LM35 inside the cabinet is reading 22. Now, if this goes three or so degrees higher than this one the trigger should turn into a 1. So I'll grab hold of this temperature sensor now. Make sure you can see that. Yep. So I'll grab hold of the temperature sensor now and the trigger value should turn to a 1. Okay, so temp's gone up to 25. There you go, straight away. Turn to a 1. So in principle that works. All we need really now is to complete the circuit, hook up the actual fan um, and we're pretty much right to install it into a cabinet. Okay we've done our coding for our Arduino. Now we'll just hook up the uh, two temperature sensors in a bit more of a permanent fashion and get the uh, MOSFET connected up. Pretty much the same way you saw the wiring diagram before and it'll be right to uh, do some final testing and then if everything's uh, good put it in the cabinet. Okay I finished the coding and there was one small mistake uh, for the output pin the digital pin 7 in that code you do need to set the pin mode to output uh, if you don't do that there's no actual voltage coming out therefore it won't trigger the MOSFET. So I think we're pretty much done I've finished the circuit and let's just test it out now. Alright, so here's the circuit. Um, most things are, are bolted in enough. MOSFET's been wired up. Um, grounds all connected, everything's right to go. Uh, this is the internal sensor, this is the external sensor. So if this gets um, three degrees warmer than this one, the fan will activate, cooling the inside of the cabinet. I've got this set to a three second interval at the moment. Obviously once that's in the cabinet I won't set it for three seconds. I'll change this to probably a 30 second interval. So it'll test the temperature every 30 seconds and then activate the fan accordingly. Power up. Okay so Arduino is getting power. Everything else is connected so it all should be working. And the ambient temperature in the room is about 22 degrees. I'll just uh, hold my hand on this sensor and once there is a three degree difference there we go and that fan is putting out quite a decent amount of um, air right, let go of the sensor and in three second testing intervals or better yet just heat up the ambient temperature there we go all shuts down so there you go a little board with an Arduino and a few other components to be able to measure the internal temperature of a cabinet versus the external temperature of a cabinet and activate a fan
Next week, I'll stay on the Arduino theme and we'll actually be using an Arduino to tell whether or not your garage door has been left open uh, or use your smartphone and double check whether or not the doors are open or closed and also set it up so that it will send you an email reminder after a predetermined amount of time if you've inadvertently left your garage door open. Thanks for watching.